This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together, short bite edition. We're going to continue with kind of a generalized theme that we've been doing over the last few months um, surrounding kind of this idea of summer school or doing things in the summer to kind of, you know, refresh, um, you know, something that you've been working on with your kids, you know, kind of a refresher or a way to master things. We've been talking about a lot of workbooks, covering a little bit of curriculum reviews, um, things that we have been finishing. And today we're going to talk a little bit about something that we've been talking about in the past, which is the Evan Moore Skill Sharpener books. We've talked about, I think, the geography one. Mm-hmm. We've talked about the STEM one. We had there, I think there was a grammar and punctuation one that we did. Yeah, I'm not sure if we did. Have we, did we do a show on the grammar and punctuation yet? I don't yet? know if we did. I but can't remember. Well, I, if well, we haven't, we will. Stay <laughs> tuned. Um, <laughs> we, we, we've covered a bunch of them. And, they're, and, they're great. They really they're, are. They're really great. They're these wonderful little books. And if you heard our reviews in the past... Um, You'll know that they're about 130, 140 pages long, very colorful, very vibrant, um, wonderful activities, um, very engaging, especially for for learners who who may not be a little resistant to workbooks, Mm -hmm. maybe a little resistant to sitting down and kind of just doing, you know, pencil work and things like that. I I love the the thought and energy that goes into the Evan Moore books. They're so bright and colorful. They're usually somewhere between... Um, let's say nine and eleven dollars so yeah. kind of right in that ten ten dollar ish range so they're really Absolutely. affordable too um you can often get them for a really good price at rainbow resource uh mm-hmm. center or you can get them on amazon so we'll have links in the show notes absolutely so today we're going to be talking about the skill sharpeners that's kind of like a suite of books that they've been mm-hmm. they, they have they have their normal kind of activity books around certain yeah. subjects and skills but this one's a skill sharpener. And it's this one, kind of like these extra skills. It's yeah. like the geography and things the that might, steam maybe, and STEM. They you, weren't core necessarily. Yeah, things that maybe you you wouldn't catch otherwise. Right, exactly. When you're doing your regular curriculum. This one is a STEAM. So how is that different than STEM? What they do is they incorporate the you know the traditional science, technology, engineering, and math, but they slam in there that extra A just to have a nice nice acronym. I think it's just acronym stuffing, um, but they they stuff the A in there, and that's the arts. Really mm-hmm. having that creative aspect come through um, through the activities, you know, through through the things that the, that the book asks you to do. Really, you know, honing in on that creativity. So if you mm-hmm. have um, kind of a creative student, a creative learner who really likes to learn with their hands and likes to get in there and make things, kind of a quasi-engineering type of mechanical engineering type. Um, the the art and the activities, I think, really helps to blossom. And they, they really, if you think about it, it's almost like a flower petal if we're going to start jamming metaphors in like I always <laughs> like to do. You know, you have kind of the art as the cornerstone of it. You'll see that, you know, when you get these books, that the art is the cornerstone, the activities are the cornerstone. Um, and they kind of surround the stem, you know, the stem, traditional stem elements. So in this book, there are nine units. So they break up the the idea, you know, the the themes that they're going to cover into these ideas of units. And then within the unit, there are a huge amount of activities for each thing. Um, just to give you kind of an idea of like, you know, what goes into the K level stem, you know, the steam book, they talk about instruments, bird feeders, plastic bags, so a little bit of like a pollution talk. Um, screen time, so kind of an interesting idea there, being kind of a STEM thing. You know, we, we do allow our kids to like play with screens. They talk a mm-hmm. little bit about screen time. Dirty air, feelings, germs, old playground, cats and dogs. So what you, is old playground? So, I'm, I, I, I'm like, is this is this a study in tetanus? Is this about safety? Like, yeah, it's, what it's, what does old playground mean? Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, it's all about you know tetanus and everything. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I see like rusted <laughs> things. I, Ariel, I'm going to go there. I mean, I just I'm old playground. So one of the things that they yeah they're talking about is so I, you know that's actually a good point. So basically, in the unit, what they like to do is they like to like to focus on the idea of a problem. So what they do is they first start with a kind of a real world um, application. It's kind of a real world thing that happens. They call it the real world connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and that establishes kind of a basis of what you're going to learn about. And then it triggers a problem, right? And so then the next page we'll talk about, well, what is this problem? And in this case, this kid has a, has an old playground. There's, there's dangerous elements. So it's kind of like a safety Talking, kind of a talk about safety, like, oh, you got to pay attention if this playground has, you know, little shards of metal or rust or maybe so it has been taken here. this is about tetanus. I'm hearing tetanus. Sort of, you know, it's a general <laughs> safety thing, you know. Um, so they do talk about the idea. Splinters. Yeah, they do talk about the problem. So then they want to learn deeper about the problem. So two points there where they talk about the real world connection 
And then when you learn more about the problem, these are activities for the adult to read to the student. So it allows, starts a little bit of a discussion. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, what would you do if you saw, you know, a screw sitting up on, you know, your, your, your wooden play structure? Oh, I'd let mommy and daddy know. And, you know, we can maybe tighten it down or something like right. that. Right. They just, just to identify the problem and in, in the sort of a scientist, scientific engineering mentality where you see something and you notice a problem and you want to start to talk about or tackle that problem. Once, you, once they, they talk a little bit more about the problem, there's an art connection. So this is the first time you actually get to do an activity. So in some, in some cases, pretty simple activity, you're just drawing, you know, a picture or you're coloring in a picture They're, these pages can be torn out. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times there's activities that you'll just tear out and have them do. In this case, it was a coloring the play structure to make it look better. Right. You know, that's kind of a weak experiment. Like in one yeah. of the other units, they talked about the birds being fed through the winter. And your job was to build your own bird feeder out of a box. And it had to have a, a structure that protected the bird because oh, it might be snowing or it might be raining. And how do you protect the food for the bird? So it's kind of, they're, they're putting like a craft in there for the art component. Exactly. Of it. Exactly. Yeah. And so then I love like the problem solving aspect though of it. Yep. Yep. And so there's a little bit of that and they, they give you some guided questions and guided talks, um, discussion points to, to have with your, your learner as they do the activity, as you're helping them through it. Art supplies are very simple. A lot of times it's just like a box or like toilet paper rolls or glue. and, and So that's the reason you keep saving all the toilet paper rolls. I no, see. No, that, that is a general thing. Like I've told both kids, if we use a toilet paper roll or any type of paper towel roll, you, we need to keep it because there's so many of these <laughs> activities that call for it. Like I just need some like thin cardboard. You can cut it down the spine and then sure, you roll it out. You can do all different types of things. There's, there's, I bet you there's a, I guarantee you there's a craft book on Amazon on what things to do. With paper towel, with paper towel it, rolls. It's toilet paper rolls, probably. <laughs> You're probably right. So once you do that first activity, then it comes back and does this idea of a science connection. And this is, tends to be just like an activity, like, oh, connect the dots or, um, you know, which food does the bird like to eat? Do they like to eat worms? Do they like to eat seeds? You know, different types of things. And that kind of harken back, harkens back to the the section that you read to the students. So they've got to kind of remember this. Typically when I, when I did these activities, this is the point where I would stop because at this point you've spent about 20 minutes, maybe 20 minutes Mm -hmm. or so on the activity. I always broke the units into about two halves. And so typically I stopped at the science connection. The units tend to be about eight pages long, eight or nine, 10 pages, somewhere in that range. I always kind of stopped right in the middle and that's kind of like the midpoint of the unit. Then you come back and you get to do a math connection. So sometimes they're asking you to do pattern recognition or counting items or, you know, what items are missing, that type of thing. So they they try to bring in a little bit of math at a kindergarten level. I think for for my learner, she was well above the math connection. So it it was a fairly easy thing. It was just a page. She she just went ran through it really quickly. So it wasn't very difficult for her. But if if you're just starting with your math curriculums, th- this would be something I think a kindergartner or even just like one year below kindergartner would find to be, you know, acceptable and challenging. Mm-hmm. From there, then you get onto like a technology connection. So in the case of like, say, the musical instruments unit, um, they're asking you to learn different instruments and then write those words. So there is some handwriting, uh, you know, they're tracing letters and tracing words. Um, and then they're keying in on instruments that they hadn't learned before, mm-hmm. right? So th- that's kind of a technology, that's what they consider kind of a technology connection. Um, after that, then you get into another activity. And this is, again, another engineering-based activity. So this is something a little bit more complex, a little bit more difficult. Um, in the case of, say, like the musical instrument unit, they ask you to make a tambourine, Right, and so they're going to give you a paper plate, some strings, crayons, markers, hole punches, and some jingly bells. So your your student's going to spend some time putting together their own tambourine. You know, and they, and they give you what to do and how the, the instructions and, and things that you can do um, to help them along with that. On the following section, and we're going kind of in order, they do a kind of a career spotlight, which I thought was really cool. So every unit that you talked about had some type of, you know, problem that you're trying to solve whether it's the plastic bags well great they're going to talk about ocean oceanographers or if they're talking about birds they're talking about orthonologists so what was old playground again i'm 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 fascinated by old playground Ariel. <laughs> i just feel like it's such a you know it's like birds or recycling or those are such general things but old playground is so Ariel, specific you, it's very late at you're, night you're, everyone i'm you're sorry you're asking 
the questions the people want to know. <laughs> just try, like, what's with the old playground? The career spotlight on old playground is landscape architect. Oh. Landscape architects plan outdoor spaces. They design parks and gardens and playgrounds. This is how a landscape architect uses steam. And so then they uh, show you how okay. they say science, math, art, technology. And they, they, they kind of have an area that you can read. You, these are sections that you read to them. And so it kind of connects the problem, the art, the I think activities. it connects with the job, you know, because so yeah. often kids only hear about like kind of the big jobs, like <laughs> doctors, astronauts, yep. you know. I mean, yep. They don't hear about all the other jobs that exist. Yeah, and I think in the you know the table of contacts, I, I oh they don't list all of them. No, I would love to just list them all off for you. They they're, they're all, they actually are very creative and very complimentary. Those to... are very like specific jobs. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so how do you feel? You know, the last book review we did was on the STEM book. Yeah. What do you think between STEM and STEAM? Both I, worth doing? STEM better? STEAM better? What's what's your take having done it with our daughter? I found the STEM book to be something you can do. Like each, in essence, they had like a unit or a section that you had to do. And then there were like six or seven pages you had to do within that. And then it ended with an activity. And I liked that because it was in the totality, you know, in doing it as a unit, you could do it in one day and do it less than 45 minutes, 40 minutes or so. I felt the steam one, you had to split it up. And because you split it up, sometimes you lose connection to the topic you're talking about because to do the whole unit in one sitting would take you a while because there's two art activities. And then there's a final activity, which is done at the end, which is the fun. And this is kind of like a fun thing to do at the end. Like, for example, I think this is the, um, this might be the uh, the illustrator one. So this is like an engine. So this one that was more like art based. So I, I think this section was feelings. All right. So the illustrator was like artistically drawing feelings. And so in the last one, you have to you have to make a book of feelings. So there's three separate activities that you have to do in the for steam each unit. And for each unit, and I found that to be too much to do in one shot. It made you or forced you to split it up and then have to revisit it. And then there was always a little bit of a catch up to say, okay, remember we were talking about plastic bags in 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 the ocean polluting and you know hurting mm -hmm. animals. Do you remember that? Oh no, I, I I sort of remember that, Dad, because oh we do this once a week. And so maybe it takes two weeks to do a unit, right? right? So now all of a sudden I'm having to spend some time to kind of re-educate on what we covered before. I found that to be a little bit more frustrating. If you would tackle it as kind of like a two-day activity, like a like if you do it on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Thursday, Friday type of thing, I think it's more useful. I just found it a little bit more frustrating from like my my standpoint. My daughter didn't care. She loved doing the activities, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, we get to make a tambourine. Oh, we get to make a fish out of paper bags. Like she didn't care about that. Um, from my standpoint, it was always like, okay, what am I teaching? What am I trying to convey? Is she understanding the information I'm giving her? Is she enjoying what she's doing? Right. Okay, I got the last one. She's enjoying it. But like it was a little bit more frustrating. So from my standpoint... You just have to treat the book. Um, you have to be a little bit more thoughtful in how you attack those units right, than in the STEM units. book. Yeah. So would you say STEM versus STEAM do STEM, but if you have time for both, are yeah. they both worth doing? I think they're both worth doing, but I would prefer to, to if go you only towards... Had one, if I, could, if I had to do one, I'd do the STEM one instead of the STEAM one. But if you find your student likes art more but doesn't really like STEM and you think that this might get them into STEM, I think go with this maybe if you have a little bit more time. So the art kind of opens that door? Yeah, the art. There's so much art in this book. As I, we, you know, we said before, there's three activities in every single unit, and there's nine of them. So you're doing 27 essentially activities across nine disciplines or nine problems. You know, There's a lot of things going on there. In the other book, in the, just the STEM book, there was only, I think, 11 or 12. Um, but they were a little bit... They had a, What I liked about the STEM book... It had some high level concepts. It had those five like earth science and you know life science and all that type of stuff. And then it had like two or three sections underneath that kind of fed into that. This does not have like an overarching theme. They just kind of hit random problems. So I liked it. I liked the STEM one for the organization. I liked it because I could do it in one day each unit. Um, but if you if you have somebody who likes art more, this may fit better, and you'll give you some really cool ideas on things to do. I found sometimes. Um, if I wasn't prepared for that day, 
I couldn't do the activity because it did call for resources sometimes. So you do want to be thoughtful about that. Like, oh, okay, I, so a little have, bit of planning. Do you have some paper plates? Do you have this type of stuff? They give you a nice resource list at the beginning, but like with all these type of books, it's like five hundred. Res- it's like fifty resources. It's like, well, I'm not going to go and gather all those things. Yeah, up. it's not like going to go put them like, in all in like, a box. It would be We're, good if we could have them all. If we had space, to just have a box sitting around the head, everything. But yeah, but this, come on. never the this way is, it works. This is real world homeschooling. This is it's, <laughs> it is it is just in time delivery of education. <laughs> if I don't have it at no, no, that no. moment, we I can't as do it. the rest of the world have now realized that that just in time, is, just in time uh, delivery, never, never in time, <laughs> never in time. Um, I did like at the end of the book they had a, an answer key. So if you ever have some questions or you weren't really sure about an answer i mean trust me sometimes a kindergarten book can slip me up i'm like what is the answer to this one? Oh, there it is yeah okay i understand because sometimes the descriptions can be not very friendly sometimes not not in this book in, or in general just like in general well, I've i think seen, it's interesting right because it's yeah. adults writing for children yeah um but they're asking other adults <laughs> to also think like kids in order to answer the questions exactly so that can sometimes be challenging it's a nice little certificate at the end so if you got a kid who likes getting awards for finishing things <laughs> there's also a thing at the end there too um but for seven or eight bucks if you're again if you're going into the summer and you're trying to figure out hey is there something i can do that's sciencey because oh man we just spent nine months learning we did our around the world journey we did our math and and reading programs but i haven't touched science with a 10-foot pole this year Okay, we don't this, know anything about that. We don't know anything about that. I mean, we did do some science. That's no, not did. really I fair. Did. But yeah, We're trying. And, and you know, that's a typical problem that we, we've heard before, which is like, oh, I need to do science for my kindergartner or first grader. It's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, we've been right. doing the Blossom and Root Space Science from their kindergarten uh, curriculum. And it's been very good, but we have not been as consistent about yeah. it as we wanted to be. So Because life gets in the way. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, and things like reading and math or, you know, they take precedence, even though science is cool. Yes, I agree. So anyway, um, skill sharpeners, Evan Moore, Steam. If you're looking for something in the summer to do, and you're not doing your like all the rest of your curriculum stuff, if you're taking a little bit of a hiatus, or you want something for a morning basket, but you just know for, there's a there's yeah, a crafts there's a crafts element to this. I love this as the morning basket. This is ten, this is where this book lived. It was in the morning basket. It was great to pull out, have her do a page or two, do an activity. It was always really you know it was a nice way for me to not have to. Come up with something. Do you feel that the crafts in here were very um, heavy on the parent involvement or was our daughter able to do most of them kind of like you gave her the supplies and she was able to make it or did you really need to be, you know, right there kind of helping her through each step of the craft? You know, the answer to that is yes and no. Like it's some of them were pretty straightforward and, and obvious. Some of them were a little bit more involvement like, oh, cut the plastic bag and make a fish out of it, you know, kind of like bending the plastic bag to make kind of a bubble art and then gluing 50 different pieces on to make a fish that required a little bit more time with me to do that. Mixed bag then. It's a mixed bag on, on, on your involvement. Yeah. Okay. But I never, I don't think I ever left the room. (laughs) I was always in the kitchen. I might've been making something food wise or something while she was doing the activity, but that was about as far as we went with it. Yeah. But anyway, steam eight or nine bucks worth giving it a try. Um, we finished it. it. Graduated to our done wall, our wall of <laughs> books that we finished. So, anyway, I would recommend it. You know, with all those caveats, if you have a learner who likes art, if you are looking for some STEM teaching for somebody Ish. in who's who's not really a STEM kind of gra- doesn't gravitate towards STEM, but they do like art. I think this was a nice bridge of the two. So, so before we go, um, we want to give a couple of shout outs because. That's the the power that we hold. With great power comes great responsibility. Oh, right. So uh, we had a listener who, uh, we talked about our Europe guide last week on the show. We had a listener who posted it in several groups to let other parents know about the guide, uh, which was really great. So Jen, I just wanted to say thank you very much. We wanted to say thank you uh, for that, for letting everybody know about that. You know, when you, when you share um, us with somebody else, that's the greatest thing that you can do for us. Uh, for our podcast. And, you know, when you provide comments that are encouraging about how much you like what we're doing here or on our YouTube or with our resource guides, we read every comment. Um, They make us all, uh, they make us smile and they make us feel like this. All the effort that we put into this is really worth it. So um, to uh, Elizabeth and Michelle and uh, Jessica and Andrea and Shelby, 
thanks for the kind words. Uh, we, we do always read the comments. And if you, uh, you know, if you ever want to share us with another mom or, or dad or grandparent or someone who's homeschooling and struggling, we appreciate that. Yeah. That's, we just want to get the word out about the podcast. That's yeah, how we grow. Many, many thanks. Many thanks. <laughs> to those of you that have downloaded or or uh, ordered the resource guide for Europe, we appreciate you. Oh, yes, thank uh, you. We really we love the you know pay what you can model because we we really believe that we want to make homeschooling affordable for families. Uh, but I know that some of you out there, you know, not only did you pay for the guide, some of you paid more to to help offset the cost for families that couldn't afford to pay for the guide, and we we so appreciate all of that. That. Every every dollar helps towards our, our goal to keep this uh, and our YouTube and, and our other resource guides and things all running. So we have fun things planned in the future, and we just wanted to take a minute to say thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!